Shomer, with this morning we start with a new chapter called Al-Ikhlas. Everybody knows, inshallah, what Al-Ikhlas means. <coughs> but still we want to go through what the scholars and what I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Al-Ikhlas in the Quran. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his uh, authentic ahadith, inshallah. First of all, any term, any term in the Islamic terminology, since it is made or was made or revealed or sent with the Arabic language, let us know what the, the meaning of this word linguistically. Linguistically, what the Arab long time ago, when they used the word ikhlas, in what meaning they use it? <coughs> they use it for atanqiya, any, any filtration, if you were to say, or purification, purification, filtration, purification. This is linguistically means from the Arabic language. And as an Islamic term, is not far from this meaning. حقيقه الاخلاص هو التبرؤ من كل ما دون الله. Like that. The reality of al-ikhlas <coughs> to be innocent from anything but Allah. You are for Allah, let's say. Everything you do in your life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Kareem, وَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالْنُسُكِ وَالْمَحْيَةِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That's it. <laughs> Tell me, my life, no, my, my prayer, my worship in general. وَالْنُسُكِ Anything we, we do other than the prayer as Active worship too, like Hajj, like Umrah, any, anything else. <laughs> and my life and my death is for Allah and Allah alone, nobody else. So Al Ikhlas is to be innocent or to be free from any anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not easy, but this is the reality of Al Ikhlas. Al Quran Kareem, or before we come to Al Quran Kareem, what is the difference between Al Ikhlas and Al Sidq? Anybody doesn't know what word Sidq means? Abdullah, Jazakallah khair, all the time. <laughs> you give me a hard time. <laughs> Al Sidq, truthful, right? Or truth? Yeah, truth. Truth. What's the difference? He, he is a truthful. And he is mukhlas. What is the difference between al-ikhlas and the siddiq? In order, a siddiq should be first than al-ikhlas. In order. Al-ikhlas, a siddiq is the base, is the original. And al-ikhlas is follower. A truthful is more important than al-ikhlas. So a siddiq first comes first, and a siddiq is the original siddiq to be truthful. Because when you deal with somebody, he wants you to be sadiq, truthful. After that, you are sincere. Not sincere is between you and Allah. <coughs> Sincerity comes later on. First, you have to be truthful, sadiq. <coughs> and another difference between a silk and an ikhlas <coughs> a silk comes before the action but the ikhlas is a part of the action before you pray before you do name before you do anything you have to be truthful first but when you start the job when you start the active worship you have to be what mukhlis <coughs> did you get this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any 
active worship without the cloth, without intention, without niyyah. This intention should be pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the difference. Uh, uh, the second difference is between al-ikhlas and al If it's not clear, I'm ready to repeat. Should I? Yes. Okay. Can you give like an example, like for example, somebody's praying? Is that going to be truthful? No, before you pray, you have to be truthful with Allah. But when you start to pray, you have to be what? Sincere. Your action, your active worship should be sincere. Should be, has to be, has to have ikhlas. <laughs> the action itself. Al-ibadah itself. And the proof of this, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلِّي لَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ إِشْ مُخْلِصِينَ Allah ordered them, and us too, to worship Allah with sincerity, with ikhlas. So, active worship or any, any act, any deed without sincerity, without ikhlas, is not acceptable. Let us any, mention few verses talking about ikhlas and from different perspectives. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be mukhlisin and to have ikhlas in what? First of all, for a deen. For a deen itself, your religion, your faith, your your belief, your deen has to be with ikhlas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, إِلَى الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَأَعْتَصَمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ Allah praise those who make their religion a pure for Allah, sincere for Allah, that means with the class. So Allah wants from us to have a class in our deen, in general. And that include everything, include everything. And there are other ayat also talking the same, uh, a deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this regard, Allah lillah al-deen al-khalis. Allah wants from people to have a deen, a pure, sincere, hand percent for him. Even 0.0001, no doubt in a deen. You have to believe in Allah, 100%. In all the six pillars of Islam, Iman, 100%. You shouldn't have any doubt in this. That's kind of deen that Allah wants. A deen khas A pure and sincere for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to have ikhlas in our ibadah. Now, a deen, it is like <clears throat> something wide. Now, a little bit, the circle is a little bit smaller, which is al-ibadah. Because a deen, <clears throat> al-islam, Include a lot of things, ibadah, ibadat, mu'amalat, uh, akhlaq, adab, everything, right? But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِلَّهَ أَعْبُدُ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ دِينِ قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينِ So in our ibadah also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to, to do it with sincerity and with ikhlas. <clears throat> also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us, or from us, whenever we invoke him to supplicate with ikhlas to. Al-dua is not part of ibadah, is the head of ibadah, right? Al-dua ibadah. Al-dua is the brain of al-ibadah, is the head of al-ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَدْعُوهُ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Invoke him, any Allah, with full sincerity. <coughs> so this is a quick ayat talking about, it's not a quick ayat, I mentioned it in a quick way, uh, talking about sincerity, but there are a lot of ayat talking about and ikhlas. Uh, 
Before I go to uh, the hadith, I want uh, to focus, uh, not to focus, to elaborate a little bit uh, the difference between two words. In the Quran Kareem, Allah mentioned, uh, Ibad Allah al Mukhlisin, and mentioned also Ibad Allah al Mukhlasin. Anybody paid attention for the difference between Mukhlisin and Mukhlasin? Al Mukhlisin with Kasra. Those who have ikhlas in in their uh, in their uh, action, in all their action, they have ikhlas, sincerity. This is mukhlasin. But mukhlasin is different story. It's different thing, different meaning. Al mukhlasin, the chosen one. That means Allah has chosen him or them. Because plurals, al mukhlasin Jazakallah khair woman. al mukhlasin Allah has chosen them. But at the same time here, we are not claiming as Muslim ummah. Uh, because we are Muslims, we have a blood, uh, some kind of blood, or that we are chosen people, like the Jews claim. That means do whatever you want. At the end of the day, you are the most below nation to Allah, and Allah will send you to. No, no, we don't claim that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran Kareem said, Laysa bi amaniyikum, wala amaniyya ahli al kitab. Mayyama su'an yuzzam. It's not based on your wishes. Your desire are the wishes of the people of the book. Whoever did wrong, Allah will punish him. Muslim than Muslim, this is the rule. Not because we are Muslims, we can do whatever we want, and we come on a Friday and everything is perfect. No. Mayaman su'an. You just have it. Anybody does wrong or did wrong, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him. Yeah, this is rule. And in Surah Al-Nisa, it's not Makki, it is Madani. You know the difference. And it is Ahkam. In Medina, Ahkam. The verses are Ahkam. It's not based on our worship. Anyway, this is but only the, to, to mention the difference between Mukhlisin. <laughs> And Mukhlasin. And maybe there are some quizzes at the end of the class. And still we have some chocolate. By the way, we need more chocolate for somebody who wants to donate. And so on. <laughs> so. Uh, <clears throat> and Imam Abu Dawood narrated in his Sunan. And uh, <coughs> Sheikh Al Albani uh, greeted as Hassan, or yeah, Hassan. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Rawiyatul Islam. He said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ida sallaytum ala al janazati fa akhlisu lahu dua. If you pray Janazah prayer, you know Janazah prayer, now we'll go. Whenever you pray, you perform Janazah prayer. A part of the prayer is what? The first takbir, based on Al Jumhur, you recite Surah Al Fatiha. Based on the Abu Hanifa, you recite what? No. No. Dua is different. Yeah. Thana, praising, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Kabir, Al 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 it is Thana. But Thana, it is the Honest, the highest place in Jannah. Jibreel, I said in the authentic hadith, told Rasulullah, Bashir Ummataka, give your Ummah, glad tidings, 
بالسلاء والرفعة والمجد يوم القيامة. Very high level for this ummah. So, so the first takbir al-fatiha. Myself, I combine between both, like the regular prayer, dua al and al-fatiha, to be at the same side because it's the opinion of al jumhur And now I'm not. It is not fiqh class today, but the Rasulullah said any prayer does not have al-fatiha is invalid or not or incomplete. So salat janazah, it is salat or not? No. It is salat. Call salat or janazah. Yeah. So mention surah al-fatiha have to be in the same side. Anyway, but there's a second rak'ah, what you say, a second takbirah, what you say? As salat al Ibrahimiyah. And the third, a dua. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whenever you perform Salat al Janazah, and Rasulullah said, Salat here, not mean at you. And Nabi called such kind of, pre- of performing as Salat. Said, Akhlisu lahud dua. Make sincere dua for him or for the Janazah, male or female. Make sincere dua. Make dua with full ikhlas for him. So again, this hadith, what indicate or, or ask us to do? To focus on al-ikhlas in a dua Shan, no dua, supplication. <coughs> Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He mentioned that two men had something, they argued, issues against each other. They went to the Prophet <coughs> What is the rule in Islam in judgment? When you have two, any, what, uh, plaintiff and defendant? What the rule, the main rule in Islam in judgment? This is the rule. If somebody came and claimed something, you have to prove it. You said, this issue is, is mine. And this brother or this person took it from me. Can you prove it that it's yours? Bring your proof. And here the proof can be paper, can be notary public, can be two witnesses, can be anything. If you cannot prove it, and still you believe that belongs to you, it is yours, but you cannot prove it. Or you bring a weak a proof. Tell us, from your part is done. Now we go to the uh, defendant. We'll ask him, it is yours or him? He said, no, it is mine. Is not his. Are you sure? Yeah, I am. I'm not asking him. I don't need to ask him. I don't know here in American courts what they do to prove it because we have another rule. Al hiyaza tu dalil al milkiya. Al hiyaza dalil al milk. What does it mean? If you have something in your in your hand, position. Now that's proof that you you have it or you own it or the position. If you have it, <coughs> the pos- the position, it is a proof that it is of yours. So I don't need to ask him to prove it. What I need to ask him, al yamin, no qasam. That's yours, not his. Al hiyaza al it's different story. But if somebody claims that this cup is mine, I'm 
I believe as, as a person. So here, a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was facing the same cases. Two people came to him, and one of them claimed something, the, 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 the plaintiff. A Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam, سَأَلَ الْمُدَّعِ الْبَيِّنَ فَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ بَيِّنَ he asked the plaintiff to prove his uh, his proof, to show his proof. He said, Rasulullah, I don't have. I don't have proof. But I'm claiming that's mine. <laughs> then a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam istahlaf al matlub. Ma huwa matlub? Al mudda alayhi. He asked the other to swear. <laughs> By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he did, he's, what he said. فَحَلَفَ بِاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُو قَالَ أُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ The defendant. أُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُو النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني أنا بقوله شعر بدنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إنك قد فعلت ولكن غفر لك بإخلاصك قول لا إله إلا الله إنك قد فعلت المطلوب منك قضاء هل عم تكلم ديانة as قضاء as judgment you done what you supposed to do you haven't done because he swear by Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that's it that makes القضاء الإسلام very quick not here you go and you hire a lawyer and you, uh, you appeal and after the appeal appeal the, until you, 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 went, you went to the Supreme Court and you pay Allah Alam how many thousand dollars and no, that's it, very easy, very simple. You don't need to, to, to spend a lot of money for the Justice Department, etc. So back to the Hadith. When the Prophet asked him to swear, and he did, and then Prophet said, told him, قد فعل, you did what you're supposed to do. But, when you say, Allah, أقسم بالله, الذي لا إله إلا هو, he said, you mention it with full ikhlas, Allah forgive you all your sins. You mention it with full ikhlas, from the bottom of your heart. And subhanAllah, First of all, he was Rasulullah Sallallahu Maybe Jibreel told him that this person is sincere. He mentioned that with sincerity. But at the same time, us as people, you can judge. Sometimes, or most of the time, when somebody reads with ikhlas, mentioned khutbah with ikhlas, mentioned or dua with ikhlas, when, when he talk, is if there is ikhlas or not. Sometimes we can, there's some indication and Rasulullah when he heard him saying, أُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ يعني يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ He doesn't need to say all this. He, all he needs to say, أُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ That's it. It's not mine or it's mine or etc. But he mentioned this and Rasulullah said, Indeed Allah forgave all your sins. Because you mentioned, لا إله إلا الله with full sincerity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us like like this this way. So Amen. this hadith narrated in uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad and Imam Ahmad Shakir uh, uh, he said it is a common hadith. <coughs> Abu Mamat al Bahili radiallahu ta'ala anha. He said, a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked him a question. And you believe me, people, brothers, I don't want to say percentage, but I don't believe, I do believe that not less than 40 to 50 percent of this deen or this information, Islam, this knowledge of Islam 
came because of Sahaba asked Rasulullah questions. Look at Al Hadith. Even Al Quran and Kareem. Yes, Alunak, yes, Alunak, yes, Alunak, yes, Alunak. Yes, right? Many verses. They ask you, they ask you about the, the moon, they ask you about Al Hadith, they ask you about, about, about. Many, even verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to Rasulullah sallallahu and became Quran and Yutla till the Day of Judgment because of a Sahaba. They used to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi questions. We should thank a Sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of them, Amen. all of them, without any exception for that. They have Al Fadl after. Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You have to admit it. You have to live this, to and to believe this, and to put it in your mind. All of them, without any exception. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he asked him a question. قال أرأيت رجلا ولعله يقصد نفسه غزا يلتمس الأجر والذكرى. What is the meaning there? Just remember him that he did something good. He said, perhaps a man went to Al Jihad, but in his intention, intention he has combination. Right? You know combination when you go to the restaurant. I want the com combination. Combination between ikhlas for the sake of Allah and at the same time he wants the other to say he is a hero, which is a very strong fighter. Both. Is it? And he, he wants people to say that he's very strong, good fighter, but at the same time he has ikhlas. He went for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, فَمَالَهُ What he will get? <laughs> that means, is it acceptable? And if he did that, what he gets? He would, what the reward of him? What, in, in, in Islamic, what his position in, in Islamic perspective? <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا شيء له. But he asked, what he will get? He said, nothing. What? Nothing. He's, he fought nothing. He won the sake of Allah. Nothing. Why? Because he put a poison in it. He poisoned it. As if you, you bring a, a gallon of milk, not to percent full, whole, huh? Okay, and in front of everybody, we brought one, to put one drop of poison inside. Any one of you would drink from it? No. Subhanallah. No. For maybe cobra, you know cobra? Snake? <laughs> poison inside, it kill it. I don't know if there is any stronger poison than that, maybe. Even the Baba. Huh? Even if it was the Baba, nobody yeah. would drink. Uh, yeah, but poison. We put poison in front of everybody. Because this drop of poison, this drop, one drop, with gallon of milk, spoiled the whole thing. That he asked, Famalahu, what he will get as reward? He said, nothing. Lashay. Allah doesn't accept. Doesn't accept. It is kind of shirk, small shirk, or shirk al asr right? As you said, my shirk al asr Small shirk, minor shirk. Allah doesn't accept that. He wants all the active worship to be pure, mukh ikhlas, pure for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this person, Ada thalatha marra. He asked the Prophet the same question three times. Maybe he put in mind, maybe Rasulullah will change his 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 hukum, his answer. And with the three times, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, he, he, he told them, 
nothing. ما له nothing. ما له nothing. ما له nothing. But listen now. After the third time, listen. إن الله لا يقبل من العمل إلا ما كان له خالصا وابتغي به وجهه. Then he explained to him, Allah does not accept any action, any active worship, any deed, or good deed. Of course, jihad is good deed. If it's not with the class, has to be pure, as we explain in Arabic language, pure for him. And you have to seek the face of Allah in your active worship only this hadith is narrated in Sunan al-Nisai and this hadith on Hassan <laughs> listen to this a beautiful dialogue Usman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah who loves Asman ibn Affan? Who loves Asman ibn Affan? Everybody. Radiallahu ta'ala. Amir al Mu'mineen. He married two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the same time, he cannot combine two sisters. He married one, she died. One, why is the better battle? And he, it is, was going on, she was very sick and she died at that time. <coughs> then Rasulullah let him marry another <coughs> daughter. The last one, he didn't have any more. Then she died also. <coughs> and Rasulullah said, Wallahi, I have uh, another daughter, another, <coughs> give it to Osman. Uh, let Osman marry her. Let Osman marry her. But, khalas. First one, Zainab, with the ibn As, the last, the oldest one, Zainab, and the youngest one, Fatima with Ali, radiallahu anhu, and what's in between, Ruqayya and Umm Kulsum, both, Osman married Ruqayya and Umm Kulsum, and both did die. Rasulullah said, if I have one more daughter, I rather let Osman marry her. <coughs> That's why his nickname is what? The Nurayn. Dhul Nurayn, Sahib al Nurayn, two Nur, Nur, daughters of Rasulullah, from Rasulullah, two Nur, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'i. So, Usman once was sitting with Amr ibn al Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala two giant Sahaba. Usman said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Inni la'alamu kalimatan. If you recognize whenever we come to the hadith nabi, I have said in Arabic terms. Let me translate. But what's in between, we can do ishtihad. Inni la'alamu kalimatan la kulaha abdul haqqan. من قلبه إلا حرم على النار. عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه was sitting with some people and Omar was there. It could be at the time of when Omar was Amir al-Mu'minin. He said رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said I know a word if there any servant of Allah any person say it with full ikhlas, Allah prevent him from Jahannam. Make any <coughs> Jahannam haram on him. But what haram on him? That he's not going to, to hell fire. Because it's haram to go in hell fire on him. That means he's not going to hell fire. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I'm telling you what this word is. As if Osman mentioned like a quiz. It looks like. 
How many do not answer? I'm going to answer this question. This question. I know this word. What is this word? Here, Kalimatul Ikhlas. التي أعز الله تبارك وتعالى بها محمدا وأصحاب Is that the word of Al-Ikhlas? With this word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, gave dignity for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. And he said, and it is, وهي كلمة التقوى التي ألاص عليها نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عمه أبا طالب عند الله And it is the word of taqwa When Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم begged his uncle Abu Talib While he was dying to say it Which is, then he mentioned it أشهد أو شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله Anyone based on this hadith Anyone <coughs> mention Shahada to La ilaha illallah with full yeah. ikhlas? Allah will give you dignity, prevent you from Jahannam. This hadith is narrated in Sunan Imam Ahmad and it is authentic in <coughs> Al Allah Muhammad Shaykh Hussain. Anyone? Anyone? <clears throat> Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naddara allahu mra'an sami'a maqalati faballagha wa rubba hamil fiqh ghayri faqih wa rubba hamil fiqh ila man huwa afqahu min The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam urged, urged a sahaba to hear al-hadith and to promote it. And in this hadith he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasalam made dua for the one who hear al-hadith, al-ahkam, al-fiqh, and to uh, promote it. <coughs> what kind of dua is that? Nadhar Allahu Mra'an. You know, al nadra like any, any, may Allah make <coughs> your, your face shine. Any, uh, any active or any hayawish, how hayawish? Enlighten. The one who heard the hadith. And the, 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 the speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and promote it for others. Perhaps, he said, alayhi wa because maybe sometime you carry on some knowledge but you don't know the value of this knowledge and you give it to somebody else and he can use it. You cannot, but he can use it. He can understand more than you. Your mission is what? And to carry it as is. Don't add, don't miss anything from it. Carry it as is. كما قال عليه السلام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said ورب حامل فقه غير فقيه ورب حامل فقه إلى من هو أفقه من Sometimes people, some people they care, they carry on knowledge فقه but they are not فقهاء. He is not فقيه. <laughs> he's carrying knowledge, but he's not faqih. And sometimes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, sometimes, some people, they carry on some faqih to somebody have more faqih than him. So what's your role in this? To be truthful. <coughs> when you transfer, when you carry on this knowledge, carry it as is. Don't add, don't miss anything from it. Then he said, alayhi salatu wa salam, thalathun la yughallu alayhimna qalbu mri'in muslim, ikhlasu al-amari lillah, 
النصح لأهمة المسلمين ولزوم جماعة إليه. He mentioned عليه الصلاة والسلام three rules, three statements. The first one, إخلاص العمل لله. To purify your action or your deed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means al-ikhlas. To have ikhlas in your deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. Number two, al-nusuhu li a'imat al-muslim. To give sincere advice for the leaders of Muslims. Here I want to elaborate a little bit, but let me mention the third one. The third one, وَلُزُومُ جَمَاعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ What لُزُومُ جَمَاعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ To be with the group, with the jama'a, with the Muslim. And here also I need to elaborate. Let us say it frankly. يَرْحَمُكَ الله. Clearly. Al-Nabi alayhi salatu salam came with al-Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him as he deserved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And ziyada. And al-Quran kareem, if somebody opened the door for them, okay. And al-Quran kareem told us that we are one ummah, one group, one jama'ah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us numerous of hadith. Yadullah ma'al jama'a, yadullah ala jama'a, etc. Many hadith that to be one group. Anaqimu al-deena wa la tatafarraqu fi. Follow this deen and don't dispute and divide. Don't divide. And today is not the title of the halaqa today is not for al jamaa but we need a little bit elaborate the hadith that we mentioned. It is one jamaa, one ummah, not groups, not parties, not jamaa, only one. So, and, but when you look at the reality of Muslim ummah today, many groups. Here, I'm not talking about uh, Shi'i, Sunni, Durzi, Alawi. No, no, no. I'm talking about Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a themselves. Many groups. And each one of them claim that I am the, who is the, the right or the truthful or, 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 or I am the, I am, I am, I am. But alhamdulillah, all, if you collect all the followers of these groups, and the percentage is, is uh, low, very low, if you compare it with the, the masses of Muslim, the, the big mass, the big, the big I mean, mm -hmm. number, the majority of the others. And Rasul Islam want us to be with the group. Myself, I do believe, is not one of these groups with the majority of the Muslims. Be with the majority of Muslims. As long as they are following Kalam Rabbil Alameen, Al Quran, and the Sunnah of Rasul Al Alam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no doubt that this, the majority of Muslims, they have to have scholars to direct them. Otherwise, it's gonna, they will be divided also. But the, the, <coughs> وَالْنُصْحَ لِعَمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Advise the leaders of Muslims. Also let us be to face the reality also. Who is among the presidents or the kings or the ministries or any position back home accept an advice? No. Very rare. Really? I don't... Uh, rare. <laughs> Who is among them, if you, are, you told them, if you are a very a scholar, lot of knowledge, respectable, everybody knows you. If you go to any of the president, tell them, oh president, 
guess, you have to follow Al-Quran and Sunnah to be the law of the Muslim country. What are you talking about? If he did not kill him, he put him to jail or to pick him up. <laughs> if, I don't know if you, you agree or not mm-hmm. with me. Yeah. The problem is, the problem is, the leaders, they are not following Al-Quran law. Al-Islam law as law. It's hukum. They, they are not. Only, Jazakallah khairan, if you want to marry, you marry Islamically. And now some country, Allah, some country, I believe maybe in Morocco too. Now, in Lebanon, we have it a long time ago. You have the choice to go to the Islamic court or the Madani court, the illegal court. What that means? You, you go and marry legally, not Islamically. You have the choice. No? Alhamdulillah. But I, I think now the, the women can divorce, right? Or, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, and in Jordan also I heard something <laughs> close to this, but I don't know what is it exactly. For Egypt too? No, Khula is Islam. Khula has a procedure. But no, he has a Like, I divorce you, man. Uh, I don't know exactly, but but the problem is they interfere even in this al-ahwal al-shakhsiya, not only in other any aspect of of law or of ruling, even in this. You can imagine now as the way the marriage, if it's not Islamically, it's not any the kids are haram. And you have to, to, to know that. A few days ago, sometimes when you, you know a lot of information about this community, the problem, I solved the problem two years ago between wife and husband. Okay? They married legally and Islamically. I met uh, the, the wife. I told her, what's going on after the, this you know, divorce? He said, oh, he divorced me legally. And how about Islamically? He said, he doesn't need. He, oh, I, I do believe that he doesn't need. Yeah. I told her, are you going to marry? He said, she said, yes. Allah oh, Akbar. Wow, wow. <laughs> the new husband, if he asks you, I know that you were married. And now you divorced. What the proof? He said, I bring the from the legal. He said, it's not enough. The legal is illegal. George and Boutros made that divorce. Not uh, in Islamic way. Did he tell you, I divorce you, anti Tala? Well, he doesn't need. Wow. They want to put new rules in this day. He doesn't need. Halas, the, the, the judge Boutros or uh, George, but I don't know, he made the divorce and said, it's not enough. It's not enough. She cannot remarry that. What? Yeah. Islamically, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but she doesn't believe in me. So, yeah. you know, how does it work? Yeah. 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 So in, in, in country, some level, yeah. yeah. In, so in, the country court has uh, divorce uh, approved their divorce. They 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 should be divorced. No, no, no. It's no, at all. Of the country. Okay, no. this is the court. Legally, okay, but according no. to Islam, you should. Have <coughs> <laughs> yani, the Islam says follow the rule of the country too. A, a rule, not in deen. A rule in in dunya. For example, for example, if there is a divorce, Islam divorce between wife and husband. In this case, well, yes, after that, you have to follow the rule of this country for al no. and for many stuff, yeah. yes. But uh, our deen is not related any con- to any country. Even if you live in the moon, you have to pray five prayers. For example, if you live anywhere, when you marry, you have to marry Islamically. When you divorce, you have to divorce Islamically. After that, even back home, even back home, 
all this Israel, I don't know, turn Israel into do all this uh, procedures, procedures yeah. even back home, only for Al Hukuk to, 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 to know the, what you write and what you have to do, <laughs> it's called Tawfiq, any documentation. At the time of Rasulullah, it wasn't the court uh, physically and documentation because people any, were little and they know each other. But documentation started with Umar radiallahu ta'ala. <laughs> with Dawin. He, he, he started it, the documentation. It is something radif, uh, parallel. Same thing here. The original hukum is al Islam. Get married Islamically. After that, when I registered in court, that's fine. Nothing wrong. Divorce Islamically. After that, you want to any claim it or register it in the court, that's fine. Well, not that's fine. Maybe sometime you have to. But we have to look at the Islam. <coughs> we, are, we are Muslims. It's not enough to have the divorce over there. The husband has to follow the Islam group in the divorce. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. And that is the part of our verse uh, today, Ikhlas. Uh, Ikhlas for uh, to follow al Islam uh, Islam procedure. You have to have Ikhlas in this. Right? Exactly. Yes, predisposition. It's a theory that says that uh, whatever happens <coughs> has been decided by Allah, by God, so that mind cannot change it. Does that find expression is in Islam? Does Islam subscribe to that concept that whatever happens has been decided or decreed? For instance, we might argue that it was decreed that you be there this morning, sitting there this morning, I'll be here, but the Salim is by down there, everybody's here. That was decreed. Is that uh, something that Islam subscribes to? Father. Inshallah, Father. Yeah, but what is the example that he gave? We are sitting here right now together by the Qadr of Allah. The day you were born, it was decreed that today, this morning, at that time, you'd be sitting over there. Nothing. In this world, can be happen without the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. I have to believe in this. But the will of Allah, willness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, gave the people in some areas choices. Yeah. Allah has in the Quran, Mashia for us. You know, Mashia will. But our will, <coughs> now there is food over there, right? I'm going to look. I've seen it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you want to go and eat, you want to pick whatever you want. It's a choice. There is will to pick croissant or to pick uh, banana or I don't know, or honey <coughs> or orange juice, whatever. Right? It's, there is will. But in each one of your picking, when you choose, when when you are practicing your will, don't think that you are out of the will of Allah. No. Still, you are inside, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa ma tashaula, la And some scholars give example for this. If do you know the cruise, cruise, I heard it here in America the first time in my life. Do you know what cruise? You told me once. You go with your family on a cruise. <coughs> if you if you know you need any agent, to brother Abbas, send people to cruise too. Adam, not a trouble, trouble. Okay. And the cruise, you and your wife, your family, and the cruise from Florida, Florida. From Miami port. Chinese Suppose it's from Miami. Yeah. And this cruise starts from Miami and went south to <coughs> Bahamas. The south. The captain, call it this one, is taking this cruise to the south direction. And you are inside at this big ship. It's a ship, right? Big. Like Titanic. 
<laughs> They're huge fish. And this cruise, you go east and south. You go west. You go north. But the, the cruise itself is going what? South. You have some well inside to go east, west, south, north, inside. But all your direction inside, all your choices, all your wells inside is under the will of the captain because he's going south. Yeah. Go north, whatever you want to go north. Go move, walk north inside that. <laughs> but you are inside the ship. You're not outside of the will of the captain. Mm. Right? No. And this is an example. That we have someone. But can you go out of the ship? The shark will eat you. <laughs> if you jump from that. Well, so we have the choices. We are in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us choices. He gave us mind. He gave us the book and the messengers. And people said, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whosoever wants among you people to believe, let him. Who wants to disbelieve, let him. You have the choice. لا إكراه في الدين so then we in Islam we do believe in predisposition. Asia. We believe in the concept mm-hmm. that what divine decree. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we do believe in this concept. Now, um, if we do believe in a divine decree, can dua change God's mind? Who? Dua. Ah, no. I can change. First, we can say change, change God's mind. mind. <laughs> decision <laughs> is better, more polite. God's decision. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. You know why? Because Al Qadr is makhluk, it's Allah's creation. Allah changes it whenever He wants and however He wants. Allah wants us from the servant of Allah to beg Him in dua. To invoke him. Yeah, can change. And that's a, a strong proof, strong proof that Allah has will. He did not put his 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 uh, decision in one decision and he could not he locked it, he could not change. He created the first decision and he is the creator, he can change all the time. And that's Allah mentioned that in the Quran Kareem. Yeah, Allah Maya can he receive the story of Yunus as an example? Yeah, this is an example. It's a good example. Do you know Nabiullah Yunus alayhi salam? Did you hear about him, Yunus? Yeah. I've heard the name. Yunus. Jonah. Jonah. You have to have your uh, this whole education. Anyway. With your help. Inshallah. That's why I'm here. Zakallah <laughs> khairatullah. He used to be in the Mosul. Do you know Mosul in, in Iraq? Oh, yeah. the, Allah sent him as a messenger to the people in Mosul. Ninawa. Uh, Ninawa. Mm-hmm. In, in the Mosul, in the same area over there. <coughs> now they call it the, the state, Muhammad Ninawa. But it's a similar term. <coughs> Allah sent him, and he was very nice with them. They loved him, by the way. They loved him. And they recognize that he is truthful, his people. But they did not convert. They give him a hard time in this. They are nice, but they give him a hard time. You will love you, everything social, but you are not believing in Allah. Worship idols. He got tired from them. He left them before he took what? Permission from Allah. Because he's prophet, he's messenger. Everything has to be by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we know the history that the whale swallowed him, etc. Then they recognize. Because they, they have goodness in their heart. They knew that if the messenger left, Allah would destroy them as he destroyed Ayad, etc. They immediately react. 
when he left, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel to bring the punishment to this country, to this uh, city. Yeah. But when they wake up and they send a delegate, people to go and find where's Yunus alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel to hold on. And al Nabi told us that the angels, they were up to here in the city. Bring all the tools of destroying. And they kept holding days. Until they found him and they brought him back to the city. And he believed. And they followed. And they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were over a hundred thousand people, population, of Yazidun anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his decision because they repent, they make dua. So again, it's another proof that that dua and repentance, it changed the qadr. Yeah. Allah ta'ala ala. Salim. You say to me that uh, one, may, one may understand the hadith of the Bible. Say it again. One may understand the one who's hearing the hadith may understand it better than the one who bought it. So why he, uh, he, uh, I need to know some of the qualifications that would make this person understand the hadith better. Because some people say, say this without even making comparisons or doing any research. They just say, you know, yeah, we can understand it better than even, even the, some of the Sahaba would say. And there is no doubt about <coughs> Salim, but we did not explain because it is known. If you brought, you bring hadith to some, to a alim, to a alim, not to regular person, <coughs> has more knowledge than you, but maybe this alim, he did not hear this hadith. For example, Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, Abu Hanifa, he was a great, 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 great scholar. Okay? <coughs> but in hadith, he's, he wasn't like Imam Ahmad, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik. But if somebody brings to him a hadith, He's, I'm really sure that he can understand it more than all this four events, the three events. An example. Another example. Al Imam Shafi and Imam Ahmad, who was more knowledgeable in hadith? Ahmed. Imam Ahmad has more knowledge in hadith than Imam Shafi. Okay? But if there is no hadith, Imam Ahmad, he has, used to say, if there is any masala, and there is no ayah talking about this masala, or hadith talking about this masala, go to Shafi, don't ask me. Because he can't conclude from whatever ayat close to this meaning, or hadith close to it, he can conclude better than me. That means if I have any hadith, I give it to Imam Shafi. And he can conclude more than, better than me. And both they were giant in knowledge, right? So that means, if somebody memorizes hadith, a regular person, I want to, I don't want to say jahil, I want to say regular person. Bring it to a regular person, uh, the same. You cannot say this regular person, and he has no, has to have, has to be a knowledgeable one. If he doesn't know this hadith, but he's a knowledgeable one. Sometimes, sometimes, an example, regular example here, a person, Tell me a hadith. Myself, I did not hear it from before. I said, bring it to me. From where did you get it? Bring it to me to explain it to you. Even if some, the first time I hear. Why? Because he knows that he doesn't understand it. Even And he bring it to the sheikh to explain it. Even the sheikh did not. And he memorized it or knows it before, from before. But he believed that the sheikh can understand it more than me. It is obvious, Allah Ta'ala. Last question. Abdullah, Abdullah. <laughs> yes, I uh, If Allah wished, He could have uh, make, uh, made a Amina, Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib, all these people live longer so that uh, the Prophet would not become orphan. But this is not, this, is, this did not happen. Uh, this is some of them predeceased him, and some of them died during infancy. Uh, what is the divine 
understanding or explanation behind these tragedies in Rasulullah's life? Or was the wisdom behind it? Divine them? wisdom, yes. <laughs> I'll answer you, inshallah, but I'll advise you also after I answer. Remind me to, for the advice. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the will of Allah and the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, was born as an orphan. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants his prophet to face the difficulty of life. Allah, when Rasulullah became a prophet, gave him the choice to be a king messenger like David and uh, Solomon, or to be a servant, Abd al Rasulullah. He picked to be what? Servant. Even when the angel of death came to the Prophet and he gave him the choice to live forever till the day of judgment or to die. The angel of death cannot take the soul of a prophet without asking him the permission. This position, position of messengers uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah asked Jibreel, because Jibreel he was with the angel of death. He asked the advice from Jibreel. He said, what, Jibreel, what do you think? What you, want, what you can advise me? He said, Allah missed you. Then he said, Ila Rafiq Al-A'la. After that. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his death, died when he was in the womb of his mom. Then his mom died when he was six years. Six years. Six years. And gr grandpa died also still in nine, ten years. And his uncle after that, after al who died, to, 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 to show people that Allah's will is there. It's not necessary to have Asabiya is not to have a group to defend you from any because that the others can claim that it is what Bani Hashim's uh, issue power. It is Asabiya, it is a racist, it is only tribe of Bani Hashim. No, it is Dawah for everybody. So there are a lot of wisdom behind this. And Rasulullah none of his sons stay alive. Both of them died when he, they were gone. And Ibrahim السلام, died in, in Medina also when he, he was in a few months from Mary and Qutiyya. <coughs> you can imagine that if Rasulullah has sons, every, after Prophet died, every people they want to, with Qasim, is no, no, we want Abdullah, no, no, we want Ibrahim. I start to divide it. So this is wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran al-Kareem, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالٍ Our Muhammad is not the father of any male, any man of you. So he's for everybody. He's our father for all of us. He's father for all of us. Alayhi salatu wa salam. He doesn't he didn't have sons. None of the community of the Muslim community of Musulma can claim that Muhammad is my father. No one. Because he's father for everybody. And the proof, his wife is our mother's. If his wife is our mother, he is our father. Alayhi salatu wa salam. So this is for us, everything for this ummah. You ask Allah to accept <laughs> My advice for you and for everybody, Al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Sahaba Al Kiram Taala Anhum, the great Tabi'in, they used to advise others, don't talk about Al Qadar a lot. Don't ask questions or many questions about Al Qadar because many people, all these groups in Islam. All this group comes from Islam, they ask questions about Qadar, then they start to form their ideology. Set. 
they start, this, all the sects in Islam start from Al-Qadr, all of them, without any exception. That's why Umar radiallahu ta'ala was, when he asked him about Al-Qadr, and he start to spread uh, wrong information, doubt, he brought him and he hit him in his head. He said, still there is any doubt in your mind? He said, no, I mean, okay. now everything gone. <laughs> All the doubt gone. And this man, the same, after Umar, maybe 30 years, when this fitna started again, and he said, come, you started it, come with us. He said, no, Umar took everything from my mind. <laughs> gone. Tell us, I'm straight. <laughs> so, advice for life, for the sake of Allah, don't talk a lot about Al Qadr. Live your life. Follow the 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 ahkam al Islam, salat, saum. Get your your mind busy with getting hasanat, good reward, good uh, deed from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and forget about Al Qadr. Believe in it and forget about it, and you will find yourself, Wallahi, living with the you enjoy it, the, the Islam after that. So no room for critical thinking. No, it's not, I didn't say that. Think about Al Islam, about the rule, not Al Qadr. Because I'm telling you why. Are we makhluk or not? Do you know what makhluk? No. Yeah. We are Allah's creation. Creation, right? Right? No. And the creation, whatever you are smart, how much you are smart, intelligent, you are at the end of the day makhluk. You cannot understand the Creator. You cannot include the Creator. You cannot to heal with the Creator. Encompass the Creator. You cannot. So leave the Creator alone with what He created and get yourself busy with what Allah asked you and no. order you to do. No. And you feel the enjoyment. No. Really. Exactly. Enjoy it after that. سبحانك الله وبحمدك وتعالى على خير وصلى الله وسلم سبحانك الله وبحمدك وتعالى على خير وصلى الله وسلم وبارك الله عليك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وصرفنا في أمرنا وصدق خيرنا وصنع القوة الجاهلين اللهم ارزقنا الإخلاص في العمل اللهم ارزقنا الإخلاص في العمل اللهم ارزقنا الإخلاص في العمل اللهم وفقنا وفق أبنائنا وبناتنا ونسائنا وجميع المسلمين وصلى الله في نبي الله وجميع شباب العباد إنك على كل شيء قدير وجاهد جدير Inshallah, we'll make also dua for somebody who passed away. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallam. Allahumma qli hayyina wa yitina wa shahidina wa wa'idina wa kabirina wa sahibina wa majurina wa mutana. Allahumma rahimna wa nar rahim wa sallam wa barakatuhuna wa tabqa wa al-iman. Allahumma qli lahum wa rahmanu wa atu wa fa'anu wa atu wa zina wa sallam wa sallam wa nakhiru wa zinur wa al-khataya. Kama yu akhtaru wa al-adhu wa al-dhanas wa al-muhammad kanu wa ahsinina fa zikri ahsani wa al-kanu sinna fa zinur wa al-sami'atihim. ولكن لا ندع الفرانس وزير فرانس يشعر برحمتك يا أخي الرحيم اللهم ارحم أبائنا وأمهاتنا وأشيخنا وكل من له حق علينا اللهم ارحم جميع المسلمين إنك على كل شيء قدير جاء الجزير صلى الله عليه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله